Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to test for normality in SPSS. Now before we start, let's take a quick look at our data sets here. I have um, created these two data sets. I'm just simply calling the first one sample A and the second one sample B. Now we can see that there are 24 values in each variable. So these are fictitious data that I have created for this exercise. And I have set this up in such a way that I know that one of these is, is a normally distributed and the other is not normally distributed. So let's see how uh, we can use SPSS to determine um, the levels of normality or non-normality as the case may be. So first of all, choose the Analyze menu. And we're going to go into the descriptives here. Now there's loads and loads of ways you can look in here to um, check, but if we go to the uh, descriptive statistics and the Explore option, this gives us a lot of output which we can use to determine normality. So select Explore. Now we've got two variables in here, sample A and sample B, so I'm going to put both of those into the dependent list. So click the copy button, select sample B, and port that over there as well. We don't need any factors or label cases by in this case here. I'm going to check the statistics button just to see what I'm going to get. I'm going to get descriptives, confidence interval 95%, I'm happy with that. Click on continue. Now the important one here is the plots option. So select the plots button. And the default uh, are already set up here. So I'm going to turn off the stem and leaf, but I'm going to turn on the histogram. I'd like to see a histogram of both sample A and sample B. And crucially here, normality plot with test, this is going to perform a two normality test, the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, and most importantly for us, the Shapiro with test. So select the normality plots with, with test. You can leave stem and leaf on if you want, but for the purposes here, I want to check the histogram box and the normality with plots with tests box. Click on continue. In options, um, we don't need to change anything here. I'm going to accept all the defaults, so I'm going to continue. And I'm now ready to click on OK and run the tests. So we get quite a lot of output, and let's go through this here. So first of all, we're getting some summaries here. We can see that our sample size is 24, so that means we haven't left out any data. Scroll down to the uh, regular statistics descriptives here. We can see what the mean in each one of these. So we can examine all of these. The ones I'm interested in are skewness. So the skewness is a minus 0.343. So we can see that there's a, a minor skew, negative skew in sample A. If I scroll down to sample B, I can see that there is a considerable, that that's a very strong negative skew of minus 0.873. Um, so that would indicate on its own that sample B is not normally distributed. The next table is a really important table, and this tells us for each of these that has conducted both the Kolmogorov Smirnov and the Shapiro web test. So the Shapiro web test to be more suitable for us because we have small samples. If we have extremely large samples, use the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. So in sample A, we can see that the uh, Shapiro web test statistic is 0.983, and that the significance, our p-value, is 0.946. Now that is greater uh, than uh, our, an alpha value of 0.05, or whatever our alpha value would be. It's much greater than that, and that tells us that uh, this sample A data set is normal. So if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then we have a normally distributed data set. Look at sample B, however, and we can see the test statistic is 0.873, but our significance value is 0.006, and that's way lower than an alpha value that of 0.05. So therefore, sample B is not normally distributed. Okay, so that's a definitive either or answer there to whether our data are normal or not. So sample A is normally distributed, sample B is not normally distributed. To get some visuals on this, we can see our histogram for sample A is roughly bell-shaped. It's not exactly bell-shaped, but we can see that it, 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 it follows that. And we already know that it is, according to shapiro wood test, normally distributed. If we use a QQ plot for quantile quantile plot, we can see that most of the dots on, on the chart, uh, which compares expected and observed values, uh, are along the line, a little bit of a tail down here uh, on the left hand side. But that's a good sign. If the dots are on the line, it means that the data are normally distributed. We have a detrended plot here as well. Uh, and if the values are close to zero, it tells us that we have a normally distributed data set. And once again, we have one value here, which is slightly out from the rest. If we look at the box and whisker plot, we can see that it's almost perfectly shaped uh, with quartiles and a median here in the centre. We have no outliers displayed here, so this is another strong indication that we have a normally distributed data set. Now we go on and look at sample B. We already know from the shapiro wilk test that sample B is not normally distributed, and I think if you look at the histogram, you can see here 
why there's no um, uh, bell shaped curve and we can see that there's a lot of values at the upper end if we look at the QQ plot for this we can see it's kind of snake or S shaped and that would be typical of what you would expect for data that are not normal if we go to the detrend plot uh, we can see that the data's um, the data points are wider on the previous one it started at uh, plus 0 0.2 and uh, down to 0 0.6 whereas this is a wider one we can see our data uh, our dots between the um, deviation from normal is much wider than in the previous example and finally our box and whisker plot here we can see that the median value is very very high uh, and that the quartiles here uh, are not the same as they were in the previous box and whis whisker plot so this would be uh, is indicate that it is not normally distributed so that's how you test for normality in SPSS. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.